Well, now let's get a little bit cerebral because Australian engineers have discovered a new way of precisely controlling the single electrons nestled in quantum dots which run the logic gates. That what's more, the new mechanism is less bulky and requires fewer parts which could prove essential to making large scale silicon quantum computers a reality and hopefully speaking clearly. Well, Professor Andrew Durack is the CEO and co-founder of Durack who joins me to explain what is happening. Professor, great to have you in. Um, this is a space where extraordinary breakthroughs are happening all the time, but I'm gonna have to get you to break it down to someone who is a long way from a rocket scientist. What is happening with Durack? Well, our company uh, spun out of the University of New South Wales uh, in May last year. And we're focused on building full-scale quantum computers to tackle problems in uh, big pharma, in uh, defence, in finance, uh, and also in uh, climate change and so on. So we've, we're focused on making uh, qubits in the many millions, the qubits being the units of processing uh, for quantum computers. Uh, at the moment, uh, there's a number of competing technologies uh, all around the world. Uh, from some big companies that you know, like IBM and Google, but also a number of startups that have uh, started here in Australia and all around the world. So this is this holy grail thing that is in terms of being able to get a, st uh, a stable quantum computer working in the right environment mm -hmm. and all of the mm -hmm. different things. So what does this breakthrough mean? Just kind of, you know, when yep. we say gates, I'm sort of thinking, you yep. know, moving cattle into different paddocks yep. and everything. Yep. What's happening in quantum computing? Yeah. So. The approach that we've taken with Dirac is that about a decade ago, we showed that we could take the transistors that we have on standard silicon chips that we have in our phone or laptop and change them into quantum bits of information and operate them to make a quantum processor chip. Now, the, uh, the gates that are mentioned are the so-called logic gates that do the processing. You know, in a way, on a standard chip, we have gates that perform operations to do data processing. On a quantum processor chip, things are a little bit more complicated, but in the end, the thing just looks like a chip. And uh, the focus of Dirac is to use that same technology and to get many millions of them on a chip. That's what you need in order to address the sort of problems I was talking about, like drug design, financial modeling, and so on. To put it in context, at the moment, the most advanced quantum computers in the world have less than 100 quantum bits, we need to be up in the millions if we're going to get to those really valuable applications. Now, the other part is, of course, uh, that the magnetic fields have been the traditional way to do it. Mm -hmm. You've flipped it and used uh, elect electric ones. How much of a game changer is that in terms of mm -hmm. the possibilities and, and that ability to sort of leapfrog in yep. terms of the, the numbers? Yep. So we've, we've got a technical roadmap that's been designed to get us to millions of qubits within a decade. Okay, so really get that massive value out of quantum computing. And at the moment, our roadmap assumes we're going to use the magnetic fields. What this opens up with the new discovery that we published a couple of weeks ago, it provides a potential shortcut on that roadmap. It could shave off a couple of years and potentially a significant amount of investment. So we have to make some very significant investments with chip foundries in order to develop these chips. And the actual costs involved are significant, you know, because we're using the same uh, chip foundries that are used to make the processor chips in laptops and phones. Uh, it's an expensive business and we're trying to reduce the cost of that development. So one of the key benefits of this new way of operating the qubits is that we can make it simpler and potentially cheaper to make. So can you paint a picture of the time frames because mm -hmm. of course you're the professor of quantum mm -hmm. engineering at UNSW. I think in 2015 it was. You uh, were part of the team that built the first quantum logic gate in mm -hmm. silicon. Mm -hmm. Are we talking years or decades or how quickly do you feel you can move? All right. So first thing to understand is that there are already companies that are selling access to early stage quantum computers with just say 50 to 100 qubits, all right? There are already big corporations paying to play with those. We're looking to have online cloud accessible systems within three years. Wow. Which with people are going to be able to um, work and develop new algorithms and new ideas with quantum computers. Within a decade, in fact in six years, we're looking to be making our first one million qubit chips. And that immediately opens up very, very significant value, uh, both from a point of view of sales of hardware, but also access through the cloud. 
So, as you mentioned, spun out of UNSW mm -hmm. last year. So, what's on the cards for Dirac in all of this process? You're going to be looking for capital to work on this project mm -hmm. over the next couple of years. What are the next steps? So, w when we spun out, we had a significant Series A investment of over 20 million Australian. And uh, at the moment, we're looking at a, essentially an A2 to bridges for the next few years to complete the first phase of our technical roadmap. That's going to get our first chips made in a Tier 1 foundry um, in the US and potentially Europe. Uh, so with that, that'll allow us to expand our local team in Sydney and also get the technology transfer from what we've done in Australia into manufacturing chip plants overseas. And can I ask just at a personal mm -hmm. level, of mm -hmm. course, you've, you're an expert in this space, you've been working on it for, mm -hmm. for a long time. Do you still have those moments where you go, oh my gosh, I can't believe what we've just done and those breakthroughs and you realise that that theory is becoming reality? It, it's ab absolutely. Um, it, it, I, I'm in an extremely fortunate position in that I'm working on a fantastic connection between the business world and commercial world, but also I get to see the excitement in the lab. So, you know, this result, as it turns out, wasn't something we'd been driving to. It was a serendipitous discovery oh, wow. about a year ago. It was completely out of left field. We never expected it, but it can create a great shortcut. So when we realised what it was, uh, I mean, yeah, lots of excitement in the lab. I still get very, very excited. In that context, then, I have to ask mm. the importance of R&D and research in universities especially. How essential is that, from your point of view, yep. to the success in areas like this? Because let's be honest, quantum is one of those areas the New South Wales and federal government have identified. Of course, investors mm -hmm. are very keen to find mm -hmm. out what's happening. And it is going to dramatically change our world when we really nail it. Um, you just said this kind of happened almost by accident, serendipity, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. but because you were doing this work? The thing, you know, Dirac is a 25 year overnight success. Yep. I mean, you hear this all the time, right? It, the, we developed a stack of IP of over 40 patents that are now, you know, globally lodged in 10 patent families. That was built up over 15 to 20 years of art research funded through the Australian Research Council. We also get a lot of money from the US Army Research Office and so on. So it's been research grants at university that's allowed it. You have to have that initial basic research going on in universities in order to take, to build up the technology to have something commercialisable. Fortunately, in quantum, as it turns out, the Australian government and the New South Wales government actually placed bets very early on, mm. over 20 years ago, and it's really bearing fruit. I mean, at the moment, we have one of the most uh, thriving quantum ecosystems anywhere in the world, right here in Sydney. Yeah, absolutely amazing story. And who knew? Government's thinking 20 years ahead. It happens. Professor Andrew Dirac, great to have you on the show. We look forward to continuing to cover Dirac's story as it unfolds. Thanks for your time. Absolute pleasure, Simon.